Why coyote and not wolf? There's actually a good reason for that. And what's the deal with Bob? There's more to the call signs in Top Gun Maverick than you think. While Ed Harris's Admiral Kane is only briefly on screen, he makes his presence felt, initially entering Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell's life as the man trying to shut down the test pilot's project to perfect a jet capable of flying Mach 10, he seemingly gets outplayed. Maverick gets off the ground before Kane's arrival and hits Mach 10 successfully, while Kane can do nothing more but observe from the command center. Unfortunately, Maverick's success is short-lived as he loses control of the aircraft and crashes rather spectacularly. Still, Mitchell's guardian angel, former rival turned friend Admiral Tom Iceman Kazansky, intercedes on Maverick's behalf. Iceman gets his friend gig training young pilots for a dangerous mission at Top Gun Academy, delaying Maverick's honorable discharge once again. You get yourself in trouble, Iceman makes a call, and you're back in the air. Despite his foiled plans, it's still easy to see how Kane earned his call sign, Hammer. He's a man who strikes fast and efficiently. His presence makes an immediate impact that is impossible to miss or ignore. So while Maverick may have gotten lucky this time, it's clear Kane is a man who usually hits his target and eliminates them in one clean stroke. Initially, John Hamm's Admiral Simpson seems a strange figure to wear the call sign Cyclone. Immediately skeptical of Maverick, Cyclone presents as a serious man who makes tough decisions but has no use for risks or flaunting the rules. Everything about their interactions makes it clear that Cyclone is waiting for Maverick to fail from the moment the captain pulls up a Top Gun on his motorcycle. However, as the film progresses, there are hints of how Cyclone earned his call sign. For one, the audience learns that he was number one in his Top Gun class. In addition, the film's emphasis on instinct and doing the right thing over the prescribed method suggests that Cyclone didn't always grip the rulebook quite so hard. Second, Cyclone eventually relents. Despite the idea that including Maverick in the mission seems like a significant risk, he makes the call to let Captain Mitchell lead it. Additionally, he chooses Maverick's strategy for the mission over his own. Cyclone may be a stickler these days, but there are obviously still some wild winds in his heart. As the other admiral overseeing command of the film's training and mission, viewers never get to see Bates in the cockpit of a fighter jet. However, given his leadership style, there's plenty of evidence as to what earned him the callsign Warlock. For one, Warlock implies a certain wisdom or access to information and abilities that not just everyone has. Given his ascension in the ranks of the Navy, it seems clear that Admiral Bates must have been a skilled and intelligent pilot during his time at the stick of a fighter jet. He also magically manages to navigate the complex and none-too-small egos of Cyclone and Maverick, getting them to work together no matter how strenuously they object to doing so. That kind of interpersonal spellcasting earns you the callsign Warlock. Chief Warrant Officer Coleman comes over from the scramjet program with Maverick to aid in the film's mission. Having worked with Maverick for some time, Coleman is the captain's biggest booster from the start, the one person besides Iceman who seems to believe that Mitchell is the right man for the job. While no specific reason for the Warrant Officer's call sign of Hondo ever comes up in the movie, a look at the word's meaning in other languages offers significant insights into why he wears it and wears it well. Honshu, the largest island in Japan, has historically been known as Hondo, according to Britannica, lending the name a sense of stability and significance. In Spanish, meanwhile, Hondo means deep or profound, according to Collins Dictionary. Bashir Salhuddin's performance gives Coleman those qualities whenever he's on screen. Even goofing it up during the beach football game, the sincerity of his actions is apparent. His depth of character and thoroughness are evident throughout the film, too. Miles Teller's Lieutenant Bradley Rooster Bradshaw begins training as the only young pilot who knows Maverick. In fact, the two used to be quite close. Bradshaw is the son of Maverick's deceased wingman, Nick Goose Bradshaw. He's also Maverick's godson. However, after Maverick decided Rooster wasn't ready and set the lieutenant's progress back years, the two had a falling out and haven't spoken in quite some time. It's no time to be thinking about the past. Obviously, the lieutenant's call sign is a tribute to his dad, maintaining the Bradshaw family's bird motif. The most common image of the rooster is that of the bird whose cry announces morning and signals to a farm that it's time to get to work. Additionally, roosters walk with a strut that often has a certain air of arrogance to it. Being out in front of the action and doing so with great confidence are certainly Maverick-esque qualities. So, subconsciously or not, Bradshaw's call sign reveals he is both his father's son and his godfather's godson. 
He's a pilot who has the capacity for both of their best qualities, even if he's still struggling to find the right balance between them. While decidedly not the same as Maverick was during his Top Gun days, Lt. Saracen does, in some ways, recreate with Rooster the Maverick-Iceman dynamic. Saracen is the flashier, more confident pilot, seemingly more interested in individual glory. Rooster, on the other hand, shows more caution, perhaps too much, and is a far better team player. As Glenn Powell, the actor who plays Lt. Saracen, revealed to Cinema Blend, the script featured an even more aggressive callsign for the lieutenant to match his antagonistic demeanor. However, when on-set military consultants suggested that Slayer more closely resembled the Air Force's approach to callsigns than the Navy's, Powell rejected it and began to develop his own. Working together with director Joseph Kaczynski and screenwriter Christopher McQuarrie, the trio hit on Hangman. Powell told Jimmy Kimmel that a specific pilot with the call sign Noose was evidently a significant inspiration. And Noose became Hangman. The nickname also reflects Aronson's reputation for being only out for himself. If one is out flying with the arrogant pilot, they should be fully ready for him to leave them hanging the moment he has a chance to achieve individual glory. Monica Barbaro has made comments suggesting that the call sign Phoenix doesn't refer to the Arizona city, but actually the mythical bird. She may have even earned the name off camera, bonding with her co stars during Nights Out. She told The Hollywood Reporter, I had a pretty intense night of frivolity, we'll say, and I rose from the ashes the next day. Of course, the character of Trace has likely risen from much more serious ashes than a night out with colleagues to soar once again, and likely did so on multiple occasions. Given that the Navy only began allowing women entry into the Top Gun Academy in the 90s via the Washington Post, it seems likely that Trace encountered all types of barriers on her way to earning her wings. In that light, what better call sign could she have chosen? As the owner of the least badass call sign of them all, Lieutenant Robert Floyd, aka Bob, understandably comes in for some ribbing by his fellow pilots. I got it. Baby on board. <laughs> but no matter how his fellow pilots hassle him, Floyd seems unshakable, a fine quality to have in a fighter pilot. He chose Bob because that's who he is. In talking to the New York Times, Lewis Pullman, who plays Bob, also points out how the call sign acts as a litmus test for those around him. Given how others react to Bob, Floyd can gauge what kind of person and teammate they are. While they're attempting to read him, they end up telling him everything he needs to know about them. Lieutenant Reuben Fitch's call sign is as close to a platonic ideal of a nickname that someone in the armed forces could ask for. But payback isn't just about taking revenge. Fitch doesn't want to feel like he owes anyone a favor for them helping him out. In other words, he always pays them back as quickly as possible. Jay Ellis joked with Insider that he put the name into practice after playing a prank on co-star Lewis Pullman. As in the film, the watering hole the cast frequented had a rule that if your cell phone was lying on the bar, you had to buy everyone a drink. So one night, Ellis got a hold of Pullman's phone and put it on the bar, getting the actor on the hook for a round of drinks for everyone in the establishment. About a hundred at the time. However, like his character's call sign, Ellis made sure to pay Pullman back the money he spent. A hint to the reasoning behind Lieutenant Mickey Garcia's call sign can be seen every time Garcia climbs into a cockpit. Like the rest of his fellow pilots, his call sign, Fanboy, runs across the top of the helmet just above the visor. However, if one takes a closer look, they'll likely identify something that sets his helmet apart the font. Real life fanboys and sci fi enthusiasts will likely recognize it right away. While other pilots have their names written in a variety of scripts, Garcia's is very specifically the same font used for the titles on the classic episodes of Star Trek. Of course, not all fanboys are specifically interested in science fiction or fantasy. Anyone enthusiastic about any elements of pop culture can lay claim to the title. Lieutenant Machado's call sign of choice seems like a fantastic name regardless of backstory. Much like college mascots, choosing a cool natural predator for a call sign is an easy move. But there's actually more to it than that. As Greg Davis revealed to ComicBook.com, he immediately noticed that Machado chose Coyote as opposed to the bigger canine predator, the wolf. This put the actor in the mindset that Machado saw himself as an underdog. Therefore, the pilot likely acted accordingly, working longer and harder than many of his peers. The events of Top Gun Maverick seem to bear out this interpretation as well. 
During a critical scene, the lieutenant loses consciousness due to G-force pressure, his jet cresting and then beginning a dead drop towards the ground below. The pilot regains consciousness far closer to crashing into the ground than anyone could be comfortable with and pulls up just in time. It's the kind of thing that would shake just about anyone, including fighter pilots. Nonetheless, Machado recovers and is back at it the next time the team goes into the air to practice for the mission. Like his namesake, he's a scrapper who refuses to go out easily. To understand Admiral Tom Kazansky's call sign, viewers need to look back to Val Kilmer's performance in the original Top Gun from 1986. In that film, Kazansky was always a man of control. He largely maintained his emotions and composure regardless of the training mission or interactions with others. As a result, he was cool under pressure. For keeping it under control in and out of the cockpit, the pilot more than earned the call sign Iceman. That composed attitude seems to have continued after graduating from Top Gun. As a man who projects cool confidence, his demeanor clearly made others see him as a natural and reliable leader. As a result, he ascended to the rank of Vice Admiral and served time on the Joint Chiefs of Staff. People like a man who stays calm under pressure to be in charge, and Iceman has always been that. Viewers also see it in how he treats Mitchell now. Kind, thoughtful, and still, he helps shepherd his more emotional friend to the hard but inevitable decision Maverick must reach. While Tom Cruise's Captain Pete Mitchell certainly earned his nickname back in Top Gun, the intervening years certainly don't seem to have changed him much. He's less prone to bursts of temper than he was back when viewers first met him, but he remains as stubborn and independent-minded as ever. Your reputation precedes you. Thank you, sir. Wasn't a compliment. For those unfamiliar with the military, to have served as long as Mitchell has, still be active, and only achieved the rank of captain is highly unusual. It speaks to him having been passed over several times for promotion. Other characters' discussions of him confirm this is very much the case. His resistance to rules, to accepting things as they are instead of as they could be, ensures he's the best man for the film's near-impossible mission. His refusal to accept conventional wisdom and acceptable losses leads to him crafting a plan that wins the day and gets everyone home alive.